Let's turn our Bibles to book of Galatians, chapter 1. Galatians, chapter 1. Galatians, chapter 1. We'll be looking at verses 6 through 10. Galatians, chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. Galatians, chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. The title of the message is, Have a Backbone, Christian. Have a Backbone, Christian. Have a Backbone, Christian. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that we have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade man or God, or do I seek to please man? For if I yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. Brother Jack, can you please pray for the message? church to worship, worship you, praise you, and to listen to your word. We ask you, Lord, that you fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Use it mightily to declare your word to each and every one of us. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to think of the things that are happening outside of our lives and the things that are happening. Help us to shove those things away and help us to just focus on what you have prepared for us. We ask you that you always protect Pastor Jay and his wife, always, Lord God, from the devil's attacks, and also protect us from the devil's attacks. Fill each and every one of us in the congregation of the Holy Spirit, and also those who are listening, please be with them as well. Amen. We ask you that you would help us to be more courageous for you, Lord God, in these last days. Help us to tell others of you, of what you've done for them on Calvary's cross, Amen. and for those who are not saved, who are listening, pray that you convict them of sin, righteousness, and judgment, yes. so that today will be the day of their salvation. Amen. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Have a backbone, Christian. As we look at our text verses today, when you look at verse 6, you know, Apostle Paul is already saying, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. We see that many Christians, and I'm not talking about unsaved people, many Christians just neglect their responsibility, accountability, and become very unfaithful in a very quick matter. When Apostle Paul said, so soon removed, just because he left the arena, just because he left the church, just because he left the area, people just gave up what they were believing in. And many Christians act like that today. Today, Sunday, you're here. You're going to be charged. You know, you're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You're going to be filled with the preaching, yes. Bible study, and great fellowship amongst brethren. Amen. However, the decision that you make today doesn't last, necessarily last more than a day. For example, if you go back to work tomorrow, if you go back to school tomorrow, you go back home tomorrow, you go somewhere tomorrow, are you going to be the same dedicated, responsible, accountable, faithful Christian that you are today? Because today, if I were to ask you, if you were to put into action, if your conversation has to stand for gospel of Jesus Christ and the word of God, most likely you'll do it because the environment kinds of makes it happen. Yeah. However, if you're out there all alone by yourself, yeah. would you still stand strong in the faith? Would you be like Moses, Joshua? Would you even be like Ruth, That's right? Good. Think about Ruth. You know, she had choice to just <laughs> stay, you know, in a land yeah. where it epitomizes, you know, world, heathen worship, idol worship, but she followed Naomi. 
right? And she was Amen. blessed. That took guts, yes. right? Yeah. Absolutely. But many Christians don't have any guts nowadays because people don't think about being a responsible, accountable, faithful Christian. If you're not a responsible person, God won't use you as leader. Right. If you're not accountable, why would someone make you be a leader? If you're not faithful, you should never be thinking about being a leader because you're the first person who run away right. when faced with any you know, difficult, dangerous situation. Yes. You know, one of the great examples of someone who had backbone as a Christian was a woman. I mentioned her, you know, I think a few weeks ago. Her name is Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria, I mind you, was not even that tall. She was a very petite woman, you know. I mean, she was listed as five feet. And whenever something is listed, you could just put it low, right? Mm -hmm. Unless they're giants, you know, they want to look shorter. But a lot of folks, you know, they will kind of, you know, exaggerate the height. She was a five-foot woman. And we know her story, right? She stood for the King James Bible during her reign. You know, sun never set in England. When sun set in Britain, it rose in Canada. When sun set in Canada, it rose in India. When it set in India, it rose in Australia. It rose in South Africa. So it was throughout the whole world, the empire. And someone asked her, you know, some foreign delegate asked her, so what is your secret of your empire being so great? Is that your military might? Is that your economical power? No. She said, England, England's secret is this. She gave him the copy of King James Bible. Amen. That is the secret of England, England's success. I mean, think about it. This, we're talking about a leader, greatest leader during that time. Better than five United States presidents co combined together, right? Yeah. And then she tells anybody she meets, this is the secret Amen. of success, King James Bible. Amen. Can you imagine if, you know, Trump or Biden or whoever going to be, when in their inaugural speech, this is what's going to keep this country successful. Wow. You know, hardly unlikely, yeah. right? But how did she become like that? You know, how did she have this backbone? When she was little, and, you know, she, was, she wasn't motivated. She was nonchalant, you know. So I learned a new word. I received, like, this, you know, email message of a new word per day. You know, vocabulary is very important. So indifferent, don't care. Another word for that is poco curante, right? It's a pretty good word, poco curante. Right. Yeah, poco curant. It depends on what country you're from. It's poco curant, poco curante. It means indifferent. It means person who doesn't care. So Queen Victoria was like that. She was a poco curant. However, when one of her instructor, teacher told her that one day you're going to be the queen of this empire. You know, a lot of kids will be like, oh, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go out there and play with my dolls, you know. I'm going to play with G.I. Joe, you know, I'm going to play with toys. But she goes, you know what? That made her something very serious. She said, you know, from now on, I will be good. Realizing the sense of responsibility that she's going to have. You know, as Christians, when you got saved, you know, when you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you were Satan's child. Yeah. Now you became child of God. And as a child of God, you became a servant of Jesus Christ. Not only a servant, now you're a soldier of Jesus Christ. Not only a soldier of Jesus Christ, you're ambassador for Christ. Amen. Then there's a lot depending on you. There's a lot for you to stand for. Yes. As a servant, as a soldier, and as an ambassador for Jesus Christ. I mean, 1 Corinthians 16, 13, you know, one of our brethren, right? Brother Nathan's favorite verse, quit you like man, right? Amen. You know, be like a man. Just stand up for what's right. There's a, 
you know, theory. It's called bystander effect. Yeah. Bystander effect is when a person diffuses their responsibility and social influence because of when there are more than, I guess, two, three, four, five, when there are a lot of people around you, you tend to stop doing what you're supposed to do. Mm. For example, you know, this uh, situation, you're in a group with a group of people, strangers, and you're having an argument with a, maybe a Catholic person about the deity of Jesus Christ and the uh, you know, simple plan of salvation, gospel of Jesus Christ. And there's one person watching. Then you're like, ah, yeah, man, I'm going to stand ground. You know? And then suddenly 10 people just shows up you know, with their coffee, with their donut, and surround you guys. And they're trying to listen. Yeah. And this Catholic person, they're raising their voice, right? And then you seem to see, and then see that those 10 people, out of those 10 people, majority are for that Catholic people. They don't believe in the perfect word of God and simple plan of salvation. And suddenly, you know, you feel like, okay, you know, I think I've done my enough. You know, don't you always say to yourself, I've done enough. Yeah. You know, I, there's going to be someone else that's going to come along the way and then do their job. And you're not that person talking, but out of those 10 people, you are that another Bible-believing Christian so-called. Mm -hmm. And then you see another brother struggling, you know, with Catholic in a debate. And other people are just screaming at the Bible-believing Christian. And you yourself has a duty. You have the duty to do it. But because of bystander effect, what happens? The more bystanders are there, and now it's not 10. Now there's 20. There's 30 people hovering around. And you're less likely to speak up at all. You're less likely to do anything. If you put yourself in that situation, if you see that the Word of God needs to be preached, King James Bible has to be stand for, and the right doctrine has to be you know, told to this group of people, and someone has started, and they need help, what would you do? Help. I mean, are you the type of person who would just keep your mouth shut? And, I mean, I guess least you could do is pray, right? Sure. But however, soldiers don't just pray and just That's right. stay still during the battle. Amen. They fight. Yes, sir. I mean, what's the common characteristic of a soldier? They have a band of brothers and sisters now. Yeah. And they go and fight for each other. Amen. You think when a German soldier is trying to kill the American soldier, the American soldier's friend is just sitting next to him and just praying? Lord, you know, I pray that this German soldier does not kill my friend. No. Right thing to do, you have to fight together. Yes. As a Christian, you have to get rid of that bystander effect. Amen. If it's right, if it's in the Word of God, you just do it. Amen. That's your responsibility as a Christian. Amen. You have to do what the Bible says. No matter what the environment tells you, no matter what the situation tells you, no matter what the people around you tells you, you just have to do it. What? You're going to be chickened out all the time? I mean, what kind of Christian would you be? They're like, oh, you know what? It's not a place for me to talk. Then when is a place for you to talk? Right. Yeah. That is the question you have to ask, right? Obviously, you have to be wise about it. Wise as a servant, homeless as a dove, right? Yeah. God's going to give you right opportunity to speak up, stand for the word of God. But many times, Christians, since you don't have any backbone, you just become like, what, what should I You just become a melting ice. You know, you're super hard. You know, you're standing, you're you, you, you make everything like cold and chill. But when it comes to any type of heat that comes your way, man, you just melt. You can take that form and you can stay in that form. 
as a Christian. Yes. You and I should never be a liquid Christian, Amen. right? You know, uh, one day I'm going to be a, you know, very, very hard, strong Christian. But next day, you know what? I'm just going to be a liquid. I'm just going to be a water, just slivers away like a snake, right? Like a worm, you know, just running away. Yes. Think about your Christian walk this day and age, right? You know, in the past is past. You know, forgetting those things which are behind. Reach a force unto those things which are before. You got to press toward mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. So, if you've been a coward in the past, or you've been a strong soldier for Christ, it doesn't matter. What's most important is right now, and what's most important is your heart right now. Amen. Because some people will glory themselves in the past. You should never be that person. Amen. You might have been the you know, so-called Christian general pattern in the past. But recently, you know, you've been a softy, right? <laughs> You've been a someone, you know, who's been hiding behind the barn, hiding your animals, right? Yes. So it doesn't matter. But in the past, you might have been this, you know, coward Christian who never stood for the word of God, who never stood for Jesus Christ. That's, what's in the past is past. You just get right with the Lord. But you could still have backbone starting today. If you haven't, if you have backbone today, get it stronger, Amen. you know, so that you could take more burdens for Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. When we have examples like Queen Victoria, it should motivate you. Man, it's a leader, leader of the most powerful country at that time. And she never, never went anywhere, literally, without King James Bible. Even in her throne, King James Bible was next to her. You know, what do people usually have, right? You, whenever, wherever you are, if you need the most important document that answers many questions, you have it next to you. Amen. Now, some people have their phone nowadays, right? You know, some people have ChatGPT, like AI stuff, right? Some people have encyclopedia and other stuff. But Queen Victoria just had good old King James Bible Amen. just next to her. She stood for it. And then during her reign of 63 years, I think it's the longest, 63 years of reign, average, about 8 million King James Bible was distributed. That's about half a million Bible because of her. You know, it went out throughout the whole world. So during that age, Philadelphia and age, that was the greatest revival. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, missionaries went everywhere. We still have it during Laodicean age, but it's a lot harder now. You see it. It's really hard to be a missionary. If, you don't see as many missionaries like back in the day, during the Philadelphian age. How, do, how was that possible? Because someone like Queen Victoria stood for the King James Bible. Even in the United States, you know, originally public school was made for the young children to learn the Bible, grow in the Bible, so that they could fight against the devil. That's what public school was made for. But what is public school nowadays? Right? It's a complete mess. Yes. I mean, it's all about gender ideology. It's all about, you know, proclaiming all of this. And as Christians, you should never compromise to those things. Amen. What are you going to do? If someone asks for your opinion, if someone asks for someone's input, are you going to just stay still? You know what? I don't want people to ostracize me, right? You know? I just want to stay quiet. I want to stay peaceful. Again, you're not out there to look for a fight. You're just standing up for what's right. If someone says, we're going to bring all this, you know, gay literature to kids, and the mandate teachers to read it to four or five-year-olds, elementary kids, right? Yeah. Your mommy is Steve, your daddy is John, right? Yeah. And your mommy is Jennifer, and your daddy is Jane. Yes. If you do that, how do you think people are going to grow, those children? If you truly care about your children and the next generation, you're going to stand up for it. Amen. I mean, we do have parts of the country where they stand up for it. But, you know, God forsake in California especially, and it's hard. Yes. 
But you as a parent, you have a duty to stand up for what's right. If that's why it's your job to talk to your children each day. You can't just ignore it. I mean, they're your responsibility, right? Yes. I mean, they came out because of you and your wife, right? Husbands. Yeah. They came out because you and your husband, wives, right? Yes. Then it's your responsibility to continuously teach them from the Word of God. Amen. Because it's really easy to fall into sin. Sure is. You know, the, this backbone that I have, it could break any moment. Yeah. The backbone that you have, it could break any moment. You know why? Because your adversary devil is stronger than you. Yes. Just one moment, you take your eyes of Jesus Christ, who lives inside of you, devil's going to take all the opportunity. That's why many Christians this day and age, their home is a mess because men don't have any backbone. Yes. Right? Look at it. So soon, right? You shouldn't be that Christian who comes to church, act like the best daddy in the whole world, right? Best husband in the whole world. And suddenly, when you go home, you start yelling at your wife, your children, you get angry, right? You know, open up a cold one, even though you should never, right? And then you don't care, you don't open your Bible, you don't pray. You're just a bad example. Yes. Bad testimony. And then come back Sunday again. Ooh, you got your nicest Sunday suit on. You know, you're shiny. You make sure that your wife and your children never say anything that's happening from home. You know, it's funny how children are so truthful. They talk. Yes. I mean, they just talk what happens in their home. It doesn't matter how many warnings that you tell your children. Hey, don't you ever tell them. You don't know anybody that you and me and your, you know, your, your mom fought, right? They don't care. Maybe God made it that way, yes. right? So that you should be exposed. So that you will be exposed. That your yes. sin will find you out. So kids, you know, nonchalantly, yeah, you know, my mom and dad fight all the time, you know. So I just go home and just close the door and just, you know, or just close my ears, you know. And the other kids are listening. And they say, yeah, my parents do that too. You know? Oh, yeah? Well, me too. You know, sometimes you know, my daddy says things like I can't even say. Or I might have said it, you know, but I forgot. You know, bad words here and there. right? Your conversation should, as a Christian, your lips should not say any cuss words. Amen. Right? It doesn't matter what situation you're in. You shouldn't. Yes. You know, whether you're man, woman, children, you can't. That's harming your testimony. That's harming the body of Christ. That's harming the temple of the Holy Ghost. So you check your lips, check your tongue. When this bad word is about to come out, you know, you just pray to God, do a Nehemiah prayer, right? Yes. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman. This day and age, you get quick to anger all the time. Yes. It's not an example of having a backbone when you get angry for bad reasons, right? It's not showing a backbone that, you know, when all these liberals are just crying and yelling when they have nothing else to say, when there is a conversation going on. So you have to understand that, you know what? You know, I have a fault. First thing is you have to admit it. Admit it. You're no better than anybody. Yes. Just admit it. You know what? From the greatest Christian to least Christian, we always can stand up for the Lord more. Amen. We can have a better backbone as a Christian. And if you do not do it, then you're just going to become a bystanding Christian. And I think that would be the saddest thing to see at the judgment seat of Christ. When the Lord is playing your life, and when there are other brethren standing up for him, preaching the gospel, witnessing, and you're in the same building, you're in the same room, you're sitting next to the person, and then you don't do anything. Wow. Right? And your excuse is, there are hundreds of them, Lord. What's hundred to the Lord? Right? There are 10,000. What's 10,000 to the Lord? 
I mean, your God is Almighty God. Amen. He could take care of millions just like that. Yes. I mean, don't you think who you believe is the, I mean, most powerful, omniscient, you know, I mean, all-knowing God, creator of the universe? Yes. Then what are, why, are you, why do you, like, always become, you know, chicken about it, right? But there's reason why, right? In order to have backbone, number one thing, you have to have a final authority. You have to have a final authority. And that final authority is the Word of God, King James Bible. Every single decision, every single movement, every single thought should be based on the Word of God, right? If Word of God says preach the Word, you just preach, Yes. right? If Word of God says abstain from all appearance of evil, run away, That's it. right? If all, Word of God says, you know, husbands, love your wives, love your wives. Amen. Man, if Word of God says submit to yourself, you know, wives to your husband, you do it. Children, obey your parents. Yes. You do it. Amen. Man, this day and age, I mean, if you read, you know, book of Moses, like those laws, children, if you don't listen to your parents and your parents took you to the, you know, priest, you know, yeah. to get judged. Oh, yeah. You get stoned to death. Yes. yes. Get that sink in. Children, if you don't listen to your parents, as long as they're telling you the right things to do, if they tell you to go out and steal, you know, that's not it, right? But if they tell you to do what, according to the Word of God, if you don't listen, if you become rebellious, you even cuss at your parents, it's grounds for capital punishment. They killed you. Yeah. Think about it. But this day and age, children are so entitled. And Bible-believing Christians, families should never have entitled children. Amen. They should never be all about materialism. They shouldn't be talking about, you know, all this name brand. Right? right. What kind of example is that? What's your final authority? Is that the worldly standard or is that the word of God? Right. I mean, Yeah. You know, here's the greatest iPad for you. you know, show it up to your friends at church. Well, here's the best iPhone for you. You know, here's the biggest gadget for you. Well, tell them that your daddy and mommy drives this car. Tell them that we live in this great area and neighborhood. And children will do it. And it reflects you, parents, right? Whatever comes out of them, it tells you what your final authority is. Nowhere it is the word of God. Yeah. It's always the worldly standard. Right. That's you have to be careful. How are you ever going to have backbone if you don't stand for the King James Bible? Yeah. How are you ever going to have backbone if your final authority is not the word of God? And if final authority is the word of God, you're going to be a person who will do your best 100% to follow what he says. Amen. You want to have a backbone? then you're going to have a principle in your heart where I will never be moved by any outside factor right. except the Word of God. Amen. That's it, right? Yes. I might hurt your feeling. You might hurt many people's feeling, but you're not hurting Jesus Christ's feeling. That's it. Who do you want to offend? That's the question we always ask, right? Yes. Do you want to offend Lord Jesus Christ, who saved you from hell, who lives inside of you as your Lord and Savior? Or are you going to offend Him for the sake of all the other people? I mean, you have to make up a choice. You have to make up your mind. Because everybody, this day and age, everybody just lives in that gray state. Yeah. I don't want to offend that person, you know. I want to keep that friend, right? I never say you have to have People you see here as your best friend, you know, we have a lot of different characters. You guys not, might not match, right? Right. But you shouldn't have like an unbeliever as your best friend. Sure. The I mean, Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbeliever. That's what the Bible says. Yes. And you're like, oh, no, we've been friends since elementary school. How am I going to get rid of that person? You start preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. No, please. Talk to them about King James Bible and the right doctrine. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to do anything. They'll stop calling you. That's right. right? Yeah. You know, it's a distance happens naturally. Yeah. Yes. But 
many Christians, since you don't have any backbones, you want to keep as many friends, you want to keep as many materials as possible. Life doesn't work like that. Who controls everything? I mean, devil is the God of this world, but he gets permission from God. Yes. Right? So at the end of the day, I mean, you're telling God, you know what, God? Instead of you, I'm going to follow the devil and the world system. Instead of you, my final authority is the worldly things. Just don't, you know, be messy about it. When you are going with the world, you're going with the devil. That's it. Yes. I mean, you're devil, devil's follower. What else there is? Amen. There's only two you're going to follow. You're going to follow God or you're going to follow the devil, right? Yes. Anytime you don't follow God, you're following the devil. Then, if you don't have King James Bible as your final authority, you will fail. And you'll fail miserably. And you'll fail, you'll fail constantly. And then you know what you become? You become a very irresponsible person. What does that mean? You are that chameleon. You know, you heard of chameleon Christians. You change as the situation change, right? Just like the, you know, people you saw in Galatia. You change as the situation change, right? You know, amongst the brethren, right? You know, at the street preaching visitation at church, man, you're so strong believer. But outside of church, you go to work tomorrow, and now you're amongst your, you know, worldly friends, and you're the leader of it, right? Okay. You talk about all the worldly stuff, you know, dirty jokes, you know, dirty pictures, dirty conversation, dirty actions, right? God forbid, like, you just go out there and just drink suddenly, yeah. right? Or doing drugs, Who was like that in the Bible? We have a good example. We have Aaron, Moses' brother. Aaron, and we're talking about Aaron here. I mean, he was the priest, but he was brother of Moses. When Moses went up to the mountain, he was influenced by the whole congregation built golden calf. And there were wicked, lustful actions going on. Yes. I mean, do you want to be like Aaron? No. Like, for example, you know, God forbid, right? You know, like church leaders, you know, somehow, you know, disappears, right? You know, like Pastor Kim's gone, I'm gone, right? What are you going to do? Are you going to start going to Joe Austin? Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to Joe Austin now. Go to, like, T.D. Jakes. Oh, no, I'm going to go to John MacArthur's now, you know. I'm going to go over there, right? Oh, uh, you know what? Joe Bus Witness isn't too bad, you know. Seventh Adventist, you know. They don't like Catholics. I don't like Catholics, you oh, know. Yeah. Now I'll join somebody, right? Yeah. What happens, right? You are that irresponsible. You are that... Christian with no backbone. You have to stand for what is right. Amen. If it is the right doctrine, you have to stand wherever you are. Yes. If you're the only person who knows the right doctrine, you have to stand for that right doctrine. The Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. That's what Lord Jesus Christ said. Amen. But every new version they have missing verses, or they modify, they change. Yes. And those are devil's Bible. Yes. Then you have to stand for King James Bible. Amen. That's your final authority, right? You know, people say, I have pride of my country, right? You know, America, or you, you might have pride about your native countries, right? Wherever you came from. America. Right? And if someone talks bad about your country, Right, especially the United States. Yes. I don't think many Americans gonna just stay put. Mm-hmm. Right? You know. I mean even like, you know, Mexico, Korea, yeah. Japan, China, you know, yes. any other countries, right? You're just gonna you're not gonna just sit there, you know, when someone's you know talking bad about your country. Right? You're gonna stand up for your country. But when it comes to our country in heaven, mm. when it comes to 
our Lord and Savior, when it comes to His Word, many Christians just stay quiet. Yes. Many Christians just become like a mute, right? Yes. Amongst us, you're the most talkative person. I hear your voice all the time. But from what I'm hearing, outside of church, when it comes to the faith, standing for the faith, you're the quietest person. Shame. God, I mean, oh, you're so different. If you want to have a backbone as a Christian, you should just stay the same. Amen. Stay the same, right? I mean, if you, I mean, it's not the good testimony, best testimony, but, you know, if you haven't really read the Bible, right, and then outside, you know, you're acting like you know everything about the Bible, you know, and, but you don't know it, you know, just, just act like someone who doesn't know the Bible. Just be you, right? Yes. Yeah, if you don't know, just stay. You don't know, right? I mean, at church, you know, don't act like you're the most holiest person. If you're not, you know, for the testimony's sake, obviously, if you're a smoker, don't be smoking here, okay? No, but don't be like someone that, who doesn't smoke either. You have to get right with the Lord. Yes. That's what the whole issue is. If you don't get right with the Lord, you will always be that chameleon Christian. You will. The situation and circumstances will dictate how you act as a Christian. And that's a sad thing to be, right? If you have a job interview... And they ask you straight up, like, oh, yeah, you know, I found you somewhere in the social media. You know, I saw you out on the street preaching the gospel. Do you still do it? Yes. You're like, oh, you're, now you're double thinking. <laughs> well, if I say yes, are they going to accept me? I mean, is she a Christian? Is he a Christian? You know, or are they like a Satan worshipers? You know, who are they, right? Then, now you start compromising. Now, instead of being straight, truthful about it, yeah, I do. You know, that's my faith. I mean, it's outside of work. What are you going to do, right? Yes. And they're like, and they're like I, okay. But one thing that they don't want to see is someone who's lying. Yeah. yeah. That picture was posted last week, and you said, I haven't done it for a few months. <laughs> you know? I mean, are you that type of Christian where when you're put in a, hard position, hard place, difficult place, you just start lying, right? And you just go with the flow. You should never be a go with the flow Christian. Amen. You should never. You know, word of God is pure, you know. Yes. Lord, preserve this word. It will always stay the same, Amen. right? Yes. King James Bible will always stay the same. You know, Lord Jesus Christ is always the same, you know, yesterday, today, forever. You should stay the same when it comes to standing for the faith. Just stay the same, right? Yes. Do you think some difficulties that come your way will not be resolved by Lord eventually if you stick to Him? No. You hear many, many testimonies, right? No. You know what? I had a choice to stand up for the Lord or... Reject them. And many times, people who stood for the Lord, eventually, the problem that they were dealing with, Lord resolved it and blessed them more. The Both materialistically and physically and spiritually. But those who chose the world, the devil, instead of the Lord, you know what happened? They're all being a, living a miserable Christian life. Yes. And many of them aren't here anymore. Right? Well, what, what differentiates a Bible-believing Christian? You don't care what the world says. Amen. When it comes to the word of God. You should never care about what the world says. Right? Are you going to be that person, if the world hounds you and hounds you and hounds you, they're going to say, I'm going to get rid of your job and stuff. You're going to be coward. And like, oh, just for today, Lord, because I need to keep this job. No. You know? How do you know? And how do you not know that the Lord has some better job waiting for you? Yeah. It's like, you stand up for the Lord. That's right. I mean, this is like, you know, not a real situation, but it might be for some people. You get laid off, and suddenly you get a lot better job. Glory to God. I mean, 
Lord will always provide your need. That's his promise. God promised it. Not me, not your mom, not your dad, not your grandma, grandpa. God did. Amen. In his word. Yes. Then if you stick to him, he's going to provide your need no matter what. Thank you. What more do you need? Do you, do you have to be like Elon Musk? You know? <laughs> do you have to be like Bezos to be happy in this world? No. Never. Those guys are always worrying about next step, next step, next step. How do I become richer, 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 richer? Right? As I preached last week, you know, the way of Balaam, love of money, it's going to just lead you to destruction. Yes. You're going to compromise. You're going to gamble. You're going to do a lot of bad stuff. But when you just trust in the Lord and be thankful for what he's given you and just be responsible and stand faithful to the Lord and be accountable, he's just going to bless you. Amen. Right? Because if you don't do this, eventually you're going to become like Korah. You're going to become rebellious. You say, ah, oh, no, 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 I don't have that character in me. <laughs> Do you think anybody who, be, who ever rebelled against the Lord, against the local Bible-believing church, started out as being, you know, I'm going to go against them? No. No. They were followers in the beginning. What happens? Their pride gets in the way. I'm too good for this. Who are you to tell me this? Because hopefully... No one who's listening thinks that it's just me telling you, right? No. I mean, Holy Spirit yes. talking through me, you know, trying to get something out of you, right? Amen, amen. You're like, you know, this person always seems like, you know, he's talking about my sin, right? He's always talking about me, you know? I mean, it is good. I mean, Holy Spirit preaching you, right? Yes. But you shouldn't be like, oh, you know what? It applies to that brother more than me. It applies to that sister more than me, you know. Here and there, I stood for the Lord. Not all the time, but I know they never do it. You don't know their life, right? Maybe you do, but you should. That, it doesn't matter. You committed sin anyways. Then, eventually, many Christians who does not have backbone, they turn into rebellious people because they have pride in them. They're like, you know, I am keep on hearing about my sin, I don't have backbone. You know, I'm not acting like a real Christian man and woman or children. You know what? Forget it. You know, I don't need to hear what they say. I don't need to hear what the preacher says. You know, I'm just here at church, you know, for my sake, you know, just to show up my faith. I don't have better, any better church to go to. I mean, that contradicts yourself, you know. They're, they're, I mean, you're saying that there's no better church for me to go to, then you believe this is the right church? Then why do you reject the word of God? Yeah. I mean, shouldn't you be receiving it from the bottom of your heart? Yes. Then you, you just end up like Korah. Yeah. If you trust that Christ, you won't burn in hell, though. Yeah. And thank God for that. But, you know, you live the rest of your life as a miserable, miserable, miserable Christian. Good for nothing Christian. You're going to try to find happiness in other medium in your life, other ways of your life. Oh, let's travel more, you know. There's so much traveling you could do. I'm too tired today now. <laughs> you know, we travel all the time. Oh, yeah, let's make a lot of money. Oh, man, I have all this money, but it's not satisfying. So I have to make more and more and more. But you know what? If you're single or even if, I mean, or you're worse than that, I just go out and meet a lot of people, you know. I mean, it never satisfies you, yeah. right? You get diseases from it now, yes. you know? Like, okay. And then at that point, you've gone too far ahead. You can't come back anymore. Your pride isn't allowing you to come back. You know? When we see a lot of folks, chameleon Christians, a lot of them aren't the baddest people, you know? They're like nice people. But they didn't have backbone. That's why eventually they just went down the hill. You could be the nicest person in the world. But if you can't say no to sin, you're going to be messed up. Yes. If you don't get anything out of this message, just get this point across, you know, in your brain and in your heart. Say no to sin. Amen. No matter what, just say no to sin. Right? Just say no. 
<laughs> There's a famous quote, right? Say no to drugs, right? <laughs> you know, just say no to sin no matter what. You know? Because my final authority is the word of God. I'm yeah. going to say no to anything that's against the word of God. Amen. Then you have to study the word of God. You have to know some good doctrines. Yes. You have to know the doctrines in the word of God in order to say no. Look at Galatians. They were soon removed from it, right? Because they couldn't stand for the right doctrine. Thank God that God has put a local Bible-believing church in this area Amen. with the right doctrine. Mm-hmm. You know how precious that is? Without the right doctrine, people like Calvin killed so many other Christians. Without the right doctrine, Catholics will do kill millions and millions during the Inquisition. Yes. Without the right doctrine, communist countries outlawed the Bible and killed millions of Christians. Without the right doctrine, the country goes down straight to toilet. Doctrine matters. Yeah. And then where does right doctrine come from? The Word of God. Amen. Right Word of God, which is King James Bible. Yes. Then you have to ask yourself, you know, today, know your faults, know your weaknesses you know, as a Christian. Yes. Know the parts of your life where you had no backbone. And get right with the Lord. And then with the help of Lord Jesus Christ, being filled with the Holy Ghost, build up that character. Build up that character of having backbones. You know, personality comes with everybody, but character is something that you could build, right? You could build it. You could become a stronger Christian, soldier for Jesus Christ, better servant for him, and better ambassador for him by having backbones from now on. Say no. No to sin. Wherever you are, preach the gospel. Wherever there's opportunity, Amen. stand up for the King James Bible and perfect word of God, yes. wherever you are. When you do that, then you're going to be found faithful. If you don't, man, knowing the terror of the Lord, you've got to face the music as a Christian, and it's going to be a fearful day. Every head bowed and every eye closed. And I preached about, you know, as a Christian, having a backbone. But in order to even get to that point, you must get saved. A lot of people go to churches. A lot of people listen to many of the programs out in the open. But very few really hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. You cannot include your Holy Spirit experience. You cannot include the feelings to get saved. You must realize that you are a sinner on your way to hell. You must Believe that Jesus Christ is God who died for your sin, shedding his precious blood. You must have a repenting heart. You must turn from your ways and turn to the Lord, knowing that only Jesus Christ can save you from hell. Not your good works, not your Holy Spirit experience, nothing. Only Jesus Christ can save you from hell. With that kind of heart, then you can receive Christ, not into your head, because many people believe in vain, but from the bottom of your heart, you could receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. If anyone who's here and who's listening has any doubt about where they're going after, die, after they die, knowing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, believing that Jesus died for you, believing that he's God, yes. then receive him in your heart in this prayer. Prayer doesn't save you, again, but it's the words that comes out of your mouth from the bottom of your heart. You believe everything. You're trusting only Christ to get you to heaven and save you from hell. That will save you. Amen. In this prayer, Receive Christ as your Lord and Savior and get saved. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, the best way I know how, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord, I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying for all my sins and coming into my heart as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart, knowing that you were a sinner on your way to hell, and trust that Christ alone as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life. The Bible says in John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You know, 1 John chapter 5, 
verse 12 and 13. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son has not life. These things have I written unto you. Believe on the name of Son of God. Did you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Believe on the name of Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. God said you could know. Amen. So if someone comes up to you and asks you, do you know where you're going after you die? Don't be offended. Yeah. You should know. If you're not, if you're still not sure, you know, after the service, you know, talk to me or talk to one of the brethren here. And then make sure that before you leave this place, you know where you're going after you die.